Divine Truth Assistance Group. These group assistance sessions are about putting principles of divine truth into action. This discussion is part of the 2014 Australia Group 2 series. Jesus gives group truth on the subject of codependence in group, filmed on the 2nd of August 2014 in Monterey, New South Wales, Australia. Okay. So in this session, what we're going to do is talk to you about the group addiction, the big group addiction. And to help you identify it, I'm going to ask firstly that only the women in the audience answer my next question. Does that sound all right? So, so it's the women. I want to know from you ladies. What do you feel about yourselves? So I'm talking this moment in time, what do you feel about yourselves? All right. So let's, let's do, uh, go, Emma. Emma, I'm just feeling really unsure about myself. Yes, yeah, so I've asked you though for a feeling about yourself that you have right at this moment. Uh, it's okay if you... Doubtful. Doubtful, so. okay. Fair enough. Let's go down to... Who, what's your name? Carmel, sorry, Carmel. Cowardly. Cowardly. <laughs> I'm sorry, Carmel, I can't agree with that. And I, I, think, I think after the talk this morning, maybe you're feeling cowardly. <laughs> but what, what is your... What, so maybe if I start this question again for you ladies. What is the normal feelings you feel about women in your day-to-day -day life and because what you feel about women is what you feel about yourself so what are the normal feelings you feel in your day-to-day -day life about women and if you want you can think about it this might help you in comparison to men what do you feel about yourselves if we go to Jane Jane I, I feel angry right so I feel angry yep But let's uh, describe some of the why, why angry, you know. I just feel I'm getting more and more angry when my addictions aren't being met. Right, that's true, but let's go into a bit more detail about our true feelings. All right. So go back to Avera, straight behind. And on this side, if we come down to, what's your name again? Cheryl. Elvira. Um... I feel like women have been hard done by in the world. Right, so you feel like you've been treated badly? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. So you, see, see, when we generalise it, we don't realise that once we generalise it, often this is what we actually feel, but when we're generalising it, we get to uh, sort of almost tune out at the fact that we feel it. So if I say, what does the average person, in, woman in the world feel about men? Many of you would be able to put up hand after hand, right? But when I say, what do you feel about men or feel about yourself in relation to men? Then most of you can't think very clearly. So that's because we can't personalise these emotions very much. So if we go to Cheryl. Um, I feel inadequate. You feel inadequate. Don't, I don't agree. Sorry, I feel that one's complete facade. Pass it across to Lorley. In fact, I feel you feel the complete opposite. I feel that it's their fault. I agree. You believe it's men's fault that you feel the way you feel. Yeah, I agree with that. But, but we're still not really getting into the feelings. We're getting, this is blaming, not really feeling, Dahlia. And over here, um, uh, Laura, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Um, I feel that I want to be liked by women and I want attention from them. So you want attention by women or men? Oh, from women. Is that... Is that sorry, no, I'm asking that I'm you how you feel about yourself as a woman. Oh, how I feel about myself? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Can I let you think about it? Yeah. Let's come across to Laura. Yeah, um, 
I feel superior. Superior. Okay, this is a good one. All right. Yep. Uh, straight behind you, Kadira. Kadira, um, I often feel I can't connect with them emotionally. Connect with, with men emotionally, you mm, mean? Yeah. Um, yeah. Why? Do you know why? Seem to be on a different wavelength or something. Like, we, I don't know, women seem to think differently to men. So what, what do you feel about women in comparison to men that makes it easier to connect to women than it does to men? I guess I feel they understand me more. Ah, okay. So, so you feel like only women can understand? Yeah. You know? And this gets down to even physical things, right? You know, only women have a vagina, so they can only understand what it's like to give birth, for example. Yes. And then we take it to the, to the nth extent, don't we? We start going, only women feel sad uh, in this certain way, so men can't understand what that yes. must feel like. And, you know, we go further along the lines, yeah? Yes. Very much so. Yep, if we go uh, to Tess, and if we come down to um, Grant... Uh, Glenys. Yeah. Tess. Entitled to certain things. Entitled. Men. Yep. <laughs> what, what do you feel entitled, entitled about? Um, things like emotional protection and. Uh, right. So a man's got to make me feel safe. Yeah. Secure. Yeah. Wanted. Needed. Can we just say he's got to make you feel like you're the princess of his life? Yeah. Can we say that? So, sort of like almost princess type feelings. Yep. And there's a big demand for it. <clears throat> you know, Pam? We come here, and we were here with Clarence. Yep, fire away. Um, well, especially this week, um, how much I'm in facade, and it feels. Yeah, I'm sorry. I feel you've got a growing, uh, 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 what I would call, is it like a tiny little seedling of an awareness of that, to be frank. What is your primary emotion that you feel within yourself? It varies between anger and fear, I think. It does, I agree. Mm. So it varies between angry and fear. And when you say fear, you're not actually feeling fear. So what is the feeling? Well, I shake. You know, I can well, feel well, myself shaking inside, but I'm not even sure if that's me feeling fear. Well, sometimes that's anger. But, but let's say it is when you go into fear. You're not actually going into feeling the emotion of fear. The feeling coming out of you is, rescue me from my fear. <laughs> Isn't it? Isn't that the emotion? that when, you, when most of you ladies say that you're afraid, that you're not feeling afraid, you're saying, rescue me from feeling afraid. And it's actually rage that's coming out of you when you say you're afraid. I was, I've been feeling about, like, is this real, you know? And, you know, when I'm actually doing that, is it real or not, you know? Like, can I just say that if there's no such thing as a feeling, is this real? That's a thought. You know it. it you know it. It's real. You will either know or, know, or, or it won't be. That's a feeling. But, uh, by the way... You will feel it, not know it. So, so this is just a thought. You, you, are, you, guys, you guys are just so good, so good. And when I say guys, mostly many of you ladies in particular, you are so good at thinking that your thoughts are feelings. Because right? you, you know what you do inside? You go, AJ's always wanting us to get at, it, at our feelings. We've got to progress towards God by getting at our feelings. So you know what, what, what we do in our facade? We tell ourselves that we're having feelings when we're really all we're doing is having thoughts. And then we convince ourselves that those are feelings. And then we convince ourselves that we're getting somewhere. And to, to be honest, if we measured our progress over time, what would you notice? Actually, we're not getting anywhere. And this tells me that I'm not actually feeling any real feelings. I'm just thinking I am, so that's a thought. All right. Yep. So who was over here? Who was next over here? Pam. We need to feel safe and secure. You want to feel safe and secure, yep. yep. The man has to do that for you, doesn't he? He's got to do it. Safe, security. Entitled to safety. 
security. Heaps of false beliefs here, by the way. Heaps of false beliefs. Right. If we come to Catherine, thanks. I feel inferior to most women because that's the way I'm treated by them. Yes, you do feel inferior, but to be honest with you, Catherine, the majority of women here don't feel that. <laughs> like you are, you are. You, the reason why you've attracted this group is because you feel inferior, and the majority of the women who are here feel superior. And this is to help you work through this emotion. The reality is, Catherine is one of the few women here that actually don't feel most of these things. There you go. Did you know that, Catherine? No. No. No self-awareness, though. <laughs> if we come down to... Carol. How are you, Carol? Disrespected. Yes. Yeah, let's go down that track, shall we? You feel disrespected. Respected. Unwanted. Uncared for. Unloved. Should we write down those as well? Unwanted, unloved. By the way, does anyone have to love you? No. Does anyone have to want you? No. Does anyone have to respect you? No. Interesting. From God's perspective, nobody has to do these things. Does everyone, anyone have to make you feel safe? No. Does anyone have to make you feel secure? No. Does anyone have to make you that, that, so, say to you, oh, you're just far better than I am, you know, make you feel superior to them? No. In fact, even if they do that, they'd be not loving you, right? Isn't that interesting that many of these feelings have nothing to do with God's truth at all? But let's continue. If we come down to K, isn't it? If you wait for the mic. Okay. If you put the mic into the actual transmitter. I feel totally fake. Totally fake? I don't okay. agree, Kay. Well, inside, I know what I'm really like, and people tell me how nice I am, and that's not who I am. Well, I agree that's true, but I don't agree that's what you feel. <laughs> I agree the analysis is true, but it's not what you feel, and we're trying to get some feelings here. Two days ago, you gave me some. You gave us some feelings. Angry. angry, yeah. You were so angry. Yeah. You, you remember what you said about the two relationships and you. Yeah. What? I'm never, never, ever going there again. Exactly. That's what you feel. Rage about even considering God's truth about soulmates is just rage. Not going there again. No. That's the real feeling. Yeah. Let's go straight behind you, Tanata. Unsupported. Unsupported, yep. But see, Nada, you know, you had a couple of interactions, personal interactions with me this week. Every single one of them in total addiction, which I told you about, right? But, but this unsupported feeling, that's not the feeling I feel mostly from you. What I feel from you is you have to support me. And I'm already supporting you. I'm already supporting you coming to knowledge of truth. I'm already supporting your ability to grow in love. I'm already supporting you in a lot of ways. That's what I've been attempting to do. But that's not what you feel. What you feel is, I have to. You don't even see it as a gift I'm giving you at this point. It's a have to. I have to do it for you. It's a, it's a, it's a demand. So can I write down instead unsupported? Can I just write down demanding? Because that's what I feel yes. from you. Yeah. Okay, if we go to Karina, thanks. I feel pushy. Yep, which is very similar to this demanding, isn't it? Yep, I agree with that one. Um, if we come to, uh, if we go to Susan, who's just hidden behind there, I can't see her face properly. <laughs> Sorry. I, I was just recognising in myself how unloving I am in so many incidents. Yeah, yeah you say yeah. that, you know, you say that, and to be honest, too, a lot of times I find this a very insincere statement 
Because the reality is what you perpetrate, the feeling coming from you is that, like whenever you say, I'll give an example this week. You made a statement to the group that your relationship with Michael is in codependence. And you, you say you can see it. Do you know what the feeling was coming out of you at the time? That it's all his fault it's in codependence. Right. <laughs> that, that was the feeling that I felt from you, that it's all his fault. You have a huge amount of blame. So can I, can I instead write blame? Because yeah. <laughs> that, that's what I feel from you. Blame of the man. Now, I can understand why you have some of these feelings, by the way, ladies. So I'm not... Uh, remember, these are feelings you need to identify of the layer that's there right now. Right. Now, we could probably keep going, yes? All right, let me... T let you tell me how you feel about men. Your real feelings about men. Be honest about this. What are your real feelings about men? So, Angela. We go up to Miranda. I feel superior to men. You feel superior, yes, I agree. We've already written that down. Um, despise, disgust, disdain. Dis yeah, great emotions. Many of you are like this. Despise, disgust, uh, disdain. Can I add to that hatred? Uh, this is what many, by the way, of the men are feeling in your company. If we go to Renee, and who was over here? If we go to um, Brenda, thanks. Brenda. Yes. Renee. I feel enraged. You feel enraged towards men? Right? So you're in a rage with men, yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, Brenda, controlling and manipulative. Right, so you feel like you've got to control them and you've got to manipulate them. What, what, do you, what, what are the effective ways of manipulating a man? Come on, ladies, you know them. You've used them enough. What are the effective ways of manipulating a man? Rita, up the back on this side. Sex. Sex is one effective way of manipulating a man. You just give him some and lots of things can happen that never happened before. Right? What else? We come down to Sandra and then straight, yeah, sorry, be straight behind. Um, Megan. Megan, yep. Um, anger. Anger. Anger, yes, we already have that on, yep. What else? So if we come down to Rose and down to Ivana. Rose, make them feel better about themselves. Yes, so that's one way of manipulating them. Yeah, you, you make, so you tell him a whole heap of stories that you don't really believe about him. And he feels good, and so he'll do anything you want then, right? So this is a way of manipulating his low worth. Tell him that he's good when he doesn't feel good. Yep. Um, we will get down to Ivana, and across here, if we go to Pamela... Um, I was just going to say something similar, um, just make, uh, to manipulate them by making them feel good. Feel good about, about them. themselves, yep. 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 Okay, straight back. And on this side, Pam? Oh, yeah. Make them feel guilty, make them feel bad. Okay, yes, yes. So there's also these methods, isn't there, of making them feel guilt, making them feel bad about themselves. They are guilty, aren't they, anyway? That's what you feel, isn't it? Yes. They've done all the wrong things in the world have been done by men, right? Yep. <laughs> Isn't that true? Yes. The majority of your ladies think so. Yeah. Everything that's true. ever been wrong has all been... You put a woman in power, you'd have peace, right? Yeah, or you put four women in a room and see what peace you get. <laughs> Good luck with that. Isn't that true? <laughs> Look, the, man will, the men will get together in a room and if they disagree, they'll bop each other. What will the women do? Not only will they bitch and grow at each other behind each other's back, but they'll actually not, it won't be just a one-off. They'll plan and plot the entire destruction of a person, right? And they're good at, they're good at that. Why? Because, you, because of the lack of physical power to bop somebody in the nose without getting a hit back, there's then the engagement of your emotional power, which is all about manipulation, control, destruction, dis destroying the, the person's feelings. 
Uh, this is what a lot of the women who are in the spirit world in the hills are doing to the planet at the moment. All these feelings. Uh, now can I just ask you, we can go on for ages here, honestly I feel that these are the nice emotions that you feel, many of you. Many of you, given the opportunity, would murder a man if you could get away with it. You say no, but many of you will. Right? You want to say, Sandra? Uh, I used to have dreams about that. Like I'd wake up knowing that I've met, like completely wanted to kill the partner I was with constantly and I never ever just skipped over it. I felt guilty and ashamed but nothing to actually ever address it. Yeah. I know one man, a friend of mine, when I was in my 20s, he had two children and a young wife and uh, he woke up one day and she had this long knife in her hand. He woke up in the middle of the night and she had this long knife in her hand and she was in a bit of a daze and she was just looking at him and the knife and that's how he woke up. That would be freaky, wouldn't it? Right. I personally woke up with my, with my ex-wife one day with her straddling me with my, her hands on my throat and bashing my head against the pillow. There's a lot of rage in that. Right. And I, trust me, I didn't do anything to deserve that. So there's, there's got to be some feelings in there, right? about those things. Okay. Okay, now why have I raised all of that? Well, we're trying to build up the addiction. What, what is the group addiction? Okay, now, now, ladies, that's your chance. Now I want the men, only the men now. What do you guys feel about women in relation to yourself? Kent? We, the women are superior to us? You feel the woman superior? I agree. You feel the woman is superior? Whoops, I don't know if that colour's real good. I agree. What else do you feel, guys? So if we come across to our hour and we go... Uh, oh, let's try one on this side. So Daniel and then... So. Uh, Ellen, unsupported. Unsupported. What do you feel the women feel about you? The opposite. Yeah. So they feel that. What What do you mean by the opposite? Right. I I tend to do everything I can to support. You do everything you can to support them. Yep. 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 And what do you feel in return? Unsupported. So nothing gets done to support you? Is that how you feel? Or uh, very that, little? That's how I feel. Yeah, okay. If we, we were over at Daniel Webb. I've lost it. Lost it, sorry Daniel. If we go up the back to Gary, across to Dennis, down to Andrew. Oh, I'm afraid of them. You're afraid? Yeah, I'd agree with that, my friend. So I placate them. Yeah, you're petrified of them, actually. Yeah, but uh, Dennis? Manipulated. Manipulated. Controlled. By them, and controlled, yes. Put an R in there. So just put manipulated. Who was I over here? That's right, Andrew. Andrew, um, I feel used. Uh, used. You feel abused. Used. Used, sorry, used. How about, shall I go used and abused? <laughs> yeah. How do you feel, Justin? I feel a bit confused because my pattern has been to manipulate the woman and control the woman. Correct. You are one, the one man in this audience who doesn't fit this mould. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you have been doing the, a bit of the abusing yourself, right? Yeah. 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 Brendan? Uh, Brendan and I just I feel as though I need to make them feel good about themselves. Right, so you've got to 
what would you call that? Making someone feel good about themselves. Build up their worth. Build up yep. their worth. Nick? Nick? B I. -I We've got to spell this, learn to spell right. U I L D, up worth. Yeah. Uh, Nikki, uh, feel judged. You feel judged, yes. So, so what do you got to give them in return? Um, comfort, for so, example. So they don't judge you. Or. Um, so let's say you feel judged. Let's just do that. Judge. Yeah. Okay, maybe agree with what they're saying. Okay, so you feel like you have to agree. Yeah. What happens when you don't agree, Nikki? Can you? Uh, get ang anger projected at me. Yeah, and that's pretty uncomfortable, right? Yeah. 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 So if we go across to Peter. Uh, kind of like how they feel entitled to feel like a princess. I feel like I should have to make them feel like a princess. Right. Like so, so basically, if we're honest with ourselves, guys, most of you, look at that list and you go, yeah, that's yeah. what makes me a good man. I make them feel all of those things, right? Yeah. Yeah? So here's the codependency. See, what happens is that there's something going on inside of us, though, that causes us to feel like we have to do all of these things for the women. So what causes us to feel like we have to? What emotions within you about yourself, guys, feel like you have to do these things? So Jada. Uh, Jada, um, I think like I feel ashamed inside and it's like... Ashamed of what, though? Can you see that for a lot of men, they actually feel in relation to a woman, they just feel ashamed that they're a man? Yeah, yeah. I do. Yeah, I feel like sh even sharing myself with a woman is terrifying to me. Yeah. I think my real self. Yeah, so yeah. personal feeling ashamed of being a man. Now, isn't it interesting? The women feel you should feel that way. Yeah. And in most cases, our mothers have taught us that, particularly Western mothers in particular, have taught us that we should feel that way about ourselves because we're a man. It's such a terrible thing that you're a man. Right? Men are bastards is one I heard all the through time. my childhood. Yeah, all yeah. through your childhood. So, just, so then you start feeling like you're a bastard, right? Yeah. Yeah, start feeling there's something really wrong with you, right? Yeah. If we go to Anto, and then back up to Grant. <laughs> And so I feel like I'm like Justin in terms of that I expect a lot of things from women you know, to, to help me build my worth and how I feel about a man, but I don't feel very... You do. Yep. So I can see combinations. But, um, yep. Remember I said it wasn't everybody in the group. This is the group dynamic, though, for this group. Now, it's interesting, you guys, though, if you think about it, what the women are doing to most of the guys in the audience is what you do to women. Now, can you see that there must be a lot of really nasty goings on around us in the spirit world at the moment? Because you've got some men who are like that with women, and then you've got lots of women who are like that with men, and everyone's having a big barney. This is why a lot of you feel pretty bad, is because there's in, the, around the, in the spirit world around us at the moment, there's just lots of people having huge fights. Right? Trying to get the, trying to get superiority, trying to get control of the situation. Mary, I just wondered, Anto, for yourself, there is a big feeling in you though that you have to provide the security and a yep. feeling of safety, isn't there? Yeah, I, I do feel that more so in the last twelve months that I've, um, that there's like a victimhood feeling, and then um, if I don't do if I don't provide, I won't get anything for myself. So it's still more of a selfish feeling, though, for myself. Yeah, so it's for selfish reasons. Yeah, so doing. my victim... It's not for them, you're doing it for you. Yeah. Yeah, I'd agree with that. Yeah, so we're going back to Grant, up this side. And on this side, we go to Brendan. Um, <clears throat> Grant, uh, powerlessness, unloved... Yep. ...anger... And um, I just sort of blank out after that. Yep, no worries. Good. 
across to Gary, and on this side was Brendan. So if we go to Brendan. Just, I might be um, duplicating, but just a total unworthiness. Um, yeah, so you just feel unworthy around women just generally, yeah? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, I, I feel like it's my fault that they're like that and like I have to fix it. Yes, so there's a definite feeling, isn't there, of, of, of uh, shall we say, blame, blame. personal yeah. blame, like there is a feeling that you're going to blame yourself. Now, of course, many of you men have grown up with women who have been like that, right? And so when you grow up with women who have been like that, you actually end up feeling what they wanted you to feel. And now, for the majority of you, though, you're not feeling those feelings. The reason why I asked you about those feelings is you're not feeling them. You are spending all of your time in avoidance of feeling them. So, for example, if I can go back to yourself, Gary, if we can put the mic back to you. Last night, you were surrounded by eight women in dinner. Yep. Yep. And you had no desire whatsoever to feel any of those feelings in that situation. Yep. Yep. In fact, you enjoyed being around eight women. Yeah, so I got, I got to placate them. Yeah, and what Please. did you get in return? Anger. No, no, mm. that's not what you got in return. I got to feel good. Yeah, mm. they projected at you that you were a nice fella. Yep, yep. You know, you, you, you've broken the mould. Yep. Right? So you're unique, you know. None of, all the other guys are bad, but you're really nice. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Totally. Yeah. Mm. And then there was a table last night at dinner where the entire table was women. Just, there was not a single man on the entire table. What do you think that table felt? Well, you pr can you see you probably felt all those things? And then if you notice at dinner, there's these little clutches of men where there's four or five men all staying together, right? Having a chat with each other, staying together. Why do you think they're doing that? Right, Marco? Uh, afraid? Yeah, they're terrified. Like, I'm very terrified. <laughs> yeah. And and wouldn't you be, yeah. given all of those feelings that are actually going on? How do you feel, John? If we come across to John over on the side. I think the better word is repulsed. You feel repulsed? Yeah. Yeah, just pushed away by them like you're never going to get anything right anyway. So. Well, I, I think when, you know, when the week started, I was going to sort of you know, say hi to everybody and try to get to know everybody and sort of like, ooh. Yeah. I didn't even want to know them. No, no, you don't even want to know them. Many of the guys feel that way, right? You don't even want to engage any of these women. All you get when they, when they look at you is daggers. So how are they going to feel when you're actually engaging with them? We come down to Nick. There seems to be this emotion that we are responsible for their emotions, and that they are, and that so it goes both ways. So it's like of course every addiction is about this, right? The guys feel that the women are responsible for their emotions, and the girls feel that the men are responsible for their emotions, and both are not owning their emotions, not actually choosing to feel their own emotions. Yeah, Max. Yeah, I often. I often feel that I have to make them um, recognise that I'm not like the other guys, that I'm so, you know, they can be safe with me. Yeah. I'm not a threat, and that yeah. way they're not going to get angry at me. Yeah, yeah. This is very common for most of the guys in the audience. Michael. Michael, I feel like nurturing. You feel like sort of nursing them, taking care of them, nurturing no, them. No, I feel they are nurturing. Oh, they are, like yeah. they're nurturing you. Yeah, that's a very common thing. I think, Gary, you'd have to agree with that feeling, wouldn't you? That when you're around a whole group of women, ah, oh, I feel like I'm being nurtured now. It feels like I, I, I've yet to release from the breast. <laughs> yes. That was a polite way of saying it. Um, Marco. Like, I'm obviously one of the guys in a, in a small group, and I find that when women do come and talk, it's like more of an attack, not, not based on, like, I'm, fe I'm fearing it now. Yeah. Um, and I'm empowerless to speak the truth because I'm scared. Okay, yeah. 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 Can, can I be honest with you guys? 
you are not standing up for God's truth. You are not. To, to, if I wanted to put it more bluntly, you need to grow a pair and stand up for God's truth. Does that make sense? No matter what's coming at you. That's what a man does. In fact, that's what a woman does, actually, as well. Not that she needs to grow a pair. Right? So, so all of us should be standing up for God's truth, but we're not. We're just feeding this codependent addiction that's going on as a group. The majority of the time, that's what's going on here. Just feeding, feeding, feeding. It's a feeding frenzy. Yep. Dennis? Yeah, I, for me, I, I can feel a... I can feel what I should be saying, but it just don't want to come out. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, at some point you're going to have to exercise the will for it to come well, out. Well, I'm doing the soft ones. <laughs> well, yeah, this is what you guys always do. You, you're, you're always bending the truth because you know you can't say it as you really feel it. So you bend it. You just, uh, just do a bit of quiet here, just change it there. You try to get a little bit in. Honestly, it's way, way out of harmony with what God does. Mary? I, Darling, you just said, you know you can't say it the way you want to say it. I, I live with a man who can say it the way he wants to say it. Correct. Regardless of what comes back in And him. don't you so. think sometimes I'm scared? Like, you try being in front of a thousand people or in front, in front of two million people on the, on, in the media or something and, and then having all of those two million people project at you Right, that you're an idiot while you're trying to talk. Right? Yeah, at some point, we've got to stand up and actually connect to our real feelings and say them no matter what's happening around us. Can you see that? We can use as an excuse the fear if we want, which is what we're doing. See, this is what's happening here. You know who has dominion over you at the moment and has had for the last five days? Women, spirits, in the hills, have had total control over this entire group for five days. And, and none of you have wanted to even address it. Because last night, after the talk about addictions, the talk about hurt self, facade, talk about your will, like we talked about all those things already, and yet last night, pretty much most of you were completely in the exact thing, the exact addiction of avoidance of the issue. Mary, you wanted to say? I uh, just wanted to mention on the first day that um, when we talked about engaging the will to love and the fact that we had to put ourselves in situations that were overwhelming. Now, for someone like you, Gary, I reckon it would be a really overwhelming way to challenge your addictions to say, I'm not talking to any women today. I'm going to seek out my brothers and talk to them because you know you have equal issues with the guys as well. So this is the kind of thing, if you're going to overwhelm yourself in terms of opportunities to love, yeah. you've got to do these kind of things. Yeah. And let's be honest about a lot of your questions that you've asked me on the personal truth session questions. Most of them are not the question you need to be asking. The reason why is because you're trying to ignore the question you need to be asking. In, for this group, the biggest single problem between you and God is your belief about women. The men and the women both have the same belief about women. Right? The women believe they are superior, the men believe the women are superior. The women believe they should be looked after. The men believe they should look after the women. The women believe they should be safe and secure, be made to feel safe and secure. The men believe that's what a good man does, makes a woman feel safe and secure. The women believe they feel unwanted, so the men want them, but yeah, that's not good enough because he only wants me sexually, right? That's what most of you girls feel, isn't it? He only, he's only in it for the sex. There's no real desire for me in the, in the process. Right? And most of the ladies, you're demanding, pushy, blaming. Last, last week it was really sad, you know. There was one interaction last week where we'd been talking about this, what we would classify as intergender dynamics, right? And one guy came up to us and said, you know, 
after, after we had spent the whole day talking about addictions and intergender dynamics, he had three women come up to him and laugh about his fear right to his face. They laughed at him. Just laughed at him. So did they hear anything in the day? Obviously not. Did they have a will to love? Obviously not. They made jokes about him. They actually made jokes about his feelings. And yet, you know, if three men went up to one woman and made a whole heap of jokes about her feelings, hmm, what would most of you do then? You'd be in an uproar. Right? So there's, there's, got to be, there's got to be issues here, isn't there? This issue is the codependent that is going on between the two groups, men and women, between the two genders, here is women, you believe yourself to be better than men. You believe yourselves to be superior. You believe that they should do a whole heap of things for you. And the problem in this group is that all of you men agree. Bar a couple. All right. Ivana. Sorry, babe. Mary's left her mic up the back. She's just going to go and get it. Um, I just feel a bit confused because I feel like um, my relationship with Justin is different now. I feel like... It is, but you haven't been very happy about it. No, I know. That's... Yeah. So let's get honest about it. You remember yep. yesterday or the day before yesterday when I gave Justin some feedback and you put up your hand and you said, I've been pretty unhappy since the time I was you know, 10 or so that I can remember. Yep. And I'm telling you the reason why is because you didn't have a dad around to make you feel these things. Yep. Yeah. And at the moment in your relationship with Justin, he's coming from abusing women perspective, but you are coming from an abusing men perspective. Yep. This is why it's so much of a struggle. Because the two of you are coming from complete opposite ends. So you're in agreement with these things internally and Justin's in complete disagreement with it yep. internally. And this is going to cause like... Uh, yeah, you know? that's how it's been. But uh, yeah. well, like what I was going to say was... Um, yep. So now it feels like I... Like I feel like Justin's changed this year towards me but I feel like he's meeting more of my addictions now like correct yeah correct so it like which which is not is not going to help is it because no, when he does that he's going I, to be meeting more of these yeah because i have been very resistive and not wanting to deal with stuff correct and like he said that he had a conversation with you guys the other morning and that he said that i just get angry all the time whenever he says anything to me so yeah now i'm feeling like I really do need to actually have that tantrum stage that Mary was talking about. Um, so, yeah. Did Mary say that you have to have a tantrum stage? Can, can we pass the mic back to Mary and find out what she actually said? Can we do that? Well, I was talking about um, letting yourself feel through the addiction and let go of the false beliefs. So there's some pain that you'll have to feel in recognising that you can't have your demands met that they're not in harmony with love. What does a person in uh, rage generally do, except, uh, doesn't do that, they generally do something else, what do they generally do? Do you know, Ivana? Do you know, Ivana? Does anyone know? What, what do you generally do? Like, let, let's look at this tantrum thing, right? For most of us, the tantrum is all about what? Sis. Not getting, not getting what I want. Not getting what you want met. Okay. So, so when you start feeling the tantrum, what do most people do at that point? Do they actually feel the tantrum fully or what do they do instead? All right. If we go to Sue, thanks. I get angry. Sorry, you get... I, I get angry. With whom? Um, with the other person. Correct. So you're not actually feeling the tantrum at that point. No. A child feeling a tantrum does what? You say, you say, Catherine, what does a child do? 
jump up and down and cry and, and yeah. but uh, is it, carry on. Yeah, they yeah. carry on, but is it projected at a person? It's not, is it? It's no. Just, it's just no. like, oh, yeah, look at that. <laughs> like, and if any person around them almost goes, wow, that's pretty, well, <laughs> right? <laughs> but, but none of the persons around the child having a tantrum actually feel like they are being personally attacked, generally. Right? It's only when the child starts denying those emotions and the child starts hitting their parents now we're not talking about a tantrum anymore. Now we're talking about attack and abuse. That's different to a tantrum. So we need to be careful with our description of a tantrum. Right? A tantrum is, which is what we're all going to have to go through when we have all these unloving expectations. The tantrum is felt by the individual without, being, without harming any other person in their environment. That's what a tantrum is, how a tantrum is felt. A, an attack is always perpetrated from one person to another. The way that most of you ladies have been acting in your, in your emotions is you are still perpetra perpetrating attacks upon others. So in other words, you're not even having a tantrum. You are abusing other people. Your soul continues to degrade every time you do it. And many of you have been using the terminology of divine truth to justify your attack of other people. What, what do you think God feels about that? God teaches a whole heap of truth, and instead of you using it wisely and with sincerity, you use it as a justification for more unloving behaviour. What do you feel God feels about that? God's going, whoa. You tell them the truth and all they do is manipulate that to suit their own unhealed demands. That's pretty intense, isn't it? Okay. Now, this is the reason why you've been so difficult to talk to this week. It's one of the primary reasons. You've been under heavy spirit influenced, enraged, totally resistive to any truth, both males and females, because you are in so much codependent addiction with the other gender that all you want out of this nine days is to get some of those addictions met. And Mary, Cornelius and I are meeting your addictions the least and so that's why we find it the most difficult to be with you. Okay, now, some of you guys, men I'm talking about now, do have issues of arrogance, just as the women do. Right? And that arrogance prevents you from fully engaging. But many of you guys still want to try to please the woman, even with that arrogance that you have. Okay, so what are you going to do about it, guys? What do you think we have to do about it? Like Pierre, if you want to... What I've been trying is um, to challenge my compulsion. Um, so to spend... When I feel a woman demanding or coming for commiseration, just ignoring or not wanting to interact and feel what... So how, how would you do that lovingly? Um, see, see, most of you are going to get very unloving here, you know that? Because, because you don't really know how to address these issues lovingly. So how can we do this lovingly? Well... I would just tell, sorry, I need some time by myself. Yep. No, I'm just... Yep. Yeah. Yep, that's and good. And then I would feel rage, anger, and feel bad, and, and see well, myself... Now, now you're guessing, because you don't know what you're going to feel. Mm -hmm. but, but get some time by yourself to feel it. Stop staying in the addiction with the person. Stop just sitting there, having the interaction. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, you know, pandering, getting the return emotion. Stop doing that. That would be a good start. 
Yeah. Then you might have some emotions come up. You won't, you won't know what they are because you've got no idea at this point. But even before then, there's something that each of you need to do with this group addiction. Remember, it's the first, one of the first things that Mary's mentioned to you. We go to Bruce Things. I was going to say to be truthful. You do, but truthful. even before then, you're probably not going to be truthful unless you do this thing. So let's go back to Sue. A desire and willingness to, to love. True, but you're not going to do that unless you recognise this thing. If you're Marco. Uh, I'm going to engage, engage and communicate. True, but you're not going to do that unless you recognise this thing. Max. You've got to want to change. Yeah, but you're not going to do that unless you recognise this thing. Daniel. Oh, let's start on a few on this because uh, poor, poor Mary's running around. <laughs> uh, so we go Miranda. We don't know how to love. True, but you're not going to understand that until you recognise this thing. Dennis. Educate yourself. True, but you're not going to do that until you recognise this thing. It's one of the first things. I'm still in denial. No, it's true, that's true, but you're not going to recognise... You know, after denial... <laughs> There's between denial and doing all the other things you've mentioned, there's one step. If we go to Jane. So keep your hand up, Jane. That's good. <coughs> Jane, um, engage, um, sorry, acknowledge that you have the addiction. True, but you're not, you're not, you're not going to even see it as such, uh, as a problem until you do this thing. Kadira. Do you analyse where you're actually at? Like True, but you're not probably going to do that either. <laughs> can you see? I can be going all day. This addiction is a sin. You don't believe it is. You believe that it's the right thing. So all of you ladies believe that you can do all of that and you're right. And all of you guys think you can do all of that for the women and you're right. And you're totally wrong. But you believe you're right. You don't even see the sin in it. Intellectually even, you don't even see the sin in it. So, so you're in denial, as, as Daniel appropriately pointed out, you're in denial about this problem, and you're not even at the next step, which is to intellectually see the sin that's going on here. Now, you know what you could do? You could all just sit down for a, a few hours by yourselves, get out a notebook and say, right, I need to analyse why these feelings are sin. What do they do to other people? What do they do to yourself? How much out of harmony with love are they? How much out of harmony with truth are they? You, you, would, you would take some notice of that. That's, that's where we need to start. We need to see them as, as this is wrong before we're going to change it. Because we won't change it otherwise. Yep, Phoebe? Um, is that why, like I've been, usually I would sit with women, I'm just drawn to hanging out with women more. Of course. Yeah. But this, I've noticed without really choosing to, I find I'm sitting with men more at the table and, yep. and I'm trying to use that as an opportunity to see what is going on. But is it because I'm in complete denial of even feeling that these things are sin? Because I can't feel... Like well, the, the question you've got to ask yourself, if, if you're in complete denial that these things are sin then why do you think you might be sitting with the men? Because last night you had five men around you. Yeah. Yeah. And there's not that many men to go around here. <laughs> yeah, I guess I just, I'm not even aware, like, what I'm doing because I feel like the interactions, I'm trying to get an awareness of what's going on in the interactions, but to me I'm like, I can't see it. <laughs> you no, know? no. Yeah. So, so... Can you see that there must be a fairly strong feeling in you that you want yeah. the men's attention? Yeah. 
Yeah. I guess so, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you feel about that. Some of you women are so angry you don't want a man's attention at all, right? Uh, that's why, you know, there was a whole table last night all sitting alone. You don't want anything to do with a man. So, so your, your addiction now is turned into rage and domination. You don't even clock men. You don't even think that they are a worthy part of society or your society. That's how angry you are. Extremely angry. Right. You have no idea how much damage you're doing to the next generation of men. Huge amount of damage to the next generation of men. It's a big problem. One of the biggest problems on the planet is the intergender dynamics, the intergender emotions. The emotions from women projected at men and men projected at women. Now, a lot of you ladies are actually getting overcloaked by or influenced by women who have passed from the third world. Those women have a lot of anger and rage about how men have treated them. But many of you have treated men worse than that you've ever been treated by a man. And yet you don't want to acknowledge it. Right? Many of the women who are in the spirit world have been treated worse by men than they have ever treated a man. But because they do not want to feel their emotions, many of them are now being attracted to you and you are treating men worse than you've ever been treated. Uh, and this is why we have such a dark, negative women spirit influence on you. Because you are going along with these belief systems. These belief systems, a lot, for a lot of you ladies, it wasn't you that were treated badly, it was your mother or your grandmother or some kind of generation before yours. You see now, the youngest generation of women who have grown from being teenagers into adults, there are huge demands in them. Uh, the only men that they'll ever be attracted to are going to be men who basically do everything they want. Uh, not good for society, right? Anyway. Okay, so I wanted to have a chat with you about that because... Because basically, I'd like to see the air clear a bit. <laughs> and you have the choice here to help the air clear about bit by being more honest about your true feelings. Many of you ladies have a deep feeling of superiority over men. You only use men to have these feelings. Feelings... Avoided or pandered to, depending on which feeling. And many of you men are just going along with it. You, you're not exercising your will to love. You just go along with it and you give them what they want because you want some sex or you want some approval or you want some worth from them. or you know, You've got to look at what you want from them because that's the only reason why you're doing it. Right? And this needs to stop. Otherwise, do you think you're going to ever have a relationship with God with this addiction? I don't think so. You're more interested in having a relationship with the opposite gender than you are with God. And it's not even a relationship because it's an addiction. Here we go, Daniel. Hey, Jay, I feel I feel kind of sad that we don't actually know what a true brother-sister relationship is. And that seems to be what this is about. We don't know how to love each other as brothers and sisters. No, you don't. Because sex gets in the way. Because well, no, it's not sex that gets in the way. Not just that, but... <laughs> no, but it's not. Injuries. Sex doesn't get in the way at all. Real, real sex, as God created it to be, doesn't get in the way of a true brother and sister relationship. Yeah. Right? It's your distorted, manipulative view, view version of sex that gets in the way. Yep. Right. True sex is just for the other half of yourself, your soulmate. Yep. So that you know, if we had that feeling, there'd be no sexual projections coming out of us, and no sexual projections being received. 
And every person who tried to project at us sexually would automatically feel confronted. And every person who we, you know, if we were trying to get something from, if they had dealt with their willingness to give it, we wouldn't get it and we'd feel confronted. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's a distortion. This is the, this is the problem is that all of these emotions are distortions of reality. And if we had that education in love, then we would know. Yeah, if we had an education in love, we wouldn't do any of these things, right? We wouldn't do any of these things. No matter how badly someone in the past had treated us. So, so even if mummy was sexually abusive or dad was sexually abusive, we still wouldn't revert to this behaviour if we had a will to love. We wouldn't use it as an excuse. The majority of us are using our past as an excuse for badness. An excuse to be as bad as the people who have treated us. That's what we're doing. We're, using, we're excusing our behaviour because everybody else did it to us at some point. That's what we're doing. We've got to stop doing that if we want to love. You've got to, if you really want to love, you will be, be an example in love. You will not do these things. You will choose to not do them no matter what hurt you've had. You choose to feel your hurt instead. A person who starts owning their real childlike hurt doesn't do these things. Uh, can you see this is an indication that the real childlike hurt has not yet been arrived at for many of you? You're still in the facade, still having to deconstruct the facade. Because once you get to that true childlike hurt and feel some of the things you really feel, you would never perpetrate it upon somebody else. Right. But unfortunately, we have huge concepts that we're allowed to perpetrate these kind of things upon others because somebody else did it to us first. And that's a pretty negative and, and also very unloving thought and action that we take as a result. Yeah. Okay. Did you have that one written down in your addictions? Well, for the women, did you have all these things written down in your addictions? And for the men, did you have all the things I had listed here written down as your addictions? Some of you men did, I know. Most of you women didn't, right? Uh, did, you, did you know you're addicted to hating and despising men? Did you know that? Did you know that you're addicted to control and manipulation of men because of the power that it gives you? If you didn't have a lot of those things written down already in your exercise with Mary and Cornelius, then I suggest to you that you have not been sincere in your personal analysis. Okay. Now, um, what we're going to do next is, is that Corny is going to get up with you and talk to you about your homework, about recognising addictions. And then after that, Mary is going to talk to you about your homework, about challenging addictions. So we'll have a 10-minute break so everyone can go to the toilet and we'll get started on those two talks. <laughs>